Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna talk about putting a Unify access point in standalone mode. In standalone mode, you don't need a controller to be able to have the access point broadcast in SSID. The benefit to this, you could just scan it with your phone and have the wireless network up and running quickly. The drawback from this, you can't do really any configuration, you can't make any guest networks or specify any VLANs. But if you need a wireless network up quickly, this is the way you would do it. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord, which I'll put in the description below. For this, I'll be using the Unify APACLR, and you need to have the Unify app downloaded on your iPhone or on your Android. So let's go to my phone, and I'll show you guys how to set this up. All right, so now my Unify app is up on my phone, and we can see that the access point, you might not be able to see that too well, but the light is still white, so it's not adopted to anything. So what we need to do, we need to go to the plus sign on our phone, and it's gonna do a device discovery, which it won't be able to find anything. And at the bottom, it shows connect to an AP manually. You guys won't be able to see that because the A power mirror watermark is there, but it's right at the bottom and go connect to AP manually. And this is gonna want us to scan the QR code on the back of this access point, which we'll do now. So we're ready to scan. Okay, so now we need to connect and it's gonna ask us to join this network. And now I'm not able to broadcast because we're on a different network, but you can see that the access point name is the UAPACLR. We'll just press next. And right here is where we'll set up an SSID name. So I'm just gonna do this test network. And they do have advanced options if you wanna separate the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz networks, and we'll just press finish. And now it says it's adding the access point and it will take about a minute and 45 seconds to set up. So now it's finished and we could join this test network and then I'll be able to bring it back up on screen and we'll press join. So now if I look on my computer for the test network, we'll be able to find it. Right here, it's test network, we'll connect. We'll be test one, two, three, four. And we are connected to that network. So let's go back into my phone and see what else we could do. Now we can see that the UAP ACLR is in standalone mode and we'll go ahead and we'll click that. Here it's gonna show us a couple things. It's gonna tell us our IP address, our MAC address, the firmware version that is running on this access point, the two gigahertz and the five gigahertz SSID. It's gonna show us our encryption type. It will show us which channel it's on and which transmit power it's using. It's gonna show you how many clients are connected to it, block clients. You can locate the access point, restart the access point, and you could do an FR environment, which is gonna scan for the FR frequencies, which are being most utilized. We could click on configure, and here we could rename the device. So right now it's just UBNT, we'll just call it test. We could enable and disable the status LED. We could take a look at the radios and we could change the channel that it's on. We could change the bandwidth and the transmit power for, for both the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. We could look down at our WLANs and we could see the SSID that's enabled. You can't make a secondary SSID if you wanted a guest network. It will show you your passwords as well and the encryption. We can look at device credentials and this will be the credentials that we would use to do an SSH session into our access point. And lastly, it will show us our firmware version and it will allow us to upgrade the firmware by pressing the upgrade button. And we could also reset the access point if we wanted. So that's it for standalone mode with the Unify access points. The only real reason to use this other than a controller is if you need to get an access point done quickly and you don't have anywhere to host a controller. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.